Hello and today I'm reviewing the Round Lab Birch Juice Moisturizing Sunscreen and really quick I just want to say I purchased these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos so if you want to help support the channel check out nobsb.com, join Patreon community or click on the links below. And today I've got a Beanie Baby for Catherine and the color of the Beanie Baby made me think of her flag so very cute its name is Lucky and it's lucky that Lincoln didn't play with them before. Okay, I'm going to stack them right there like a little baby. Okay. Okay, so, really quick. The Round Lab Birch Juice Sunscreen. This is the new version, 2021 version. Uh, so they say, compared to the old version, it has better hydrating, soothing, antioxidant, and anti-inflammatory anti effect. It also has proper amount of filters. Because the original version was one of the ones... That got ousted with the Purito sunscreen Armageddon scandal thing. So their initial sunscreen uh, only had two filters and it had a test, uh, tested at like an SPF around 20-ish. So now this is their new version. Uh, this is now made by Colmar Korea, which appears to be a reputable country company. Uh, although until recently, Green Coast and now now Coast seemed like reputable companies. So. Um, this now contains four filters as opposed to the two the original did. And this one has already been tested by the Skin Institute of Korea and it showed to match the actual advertised SPF. Crazy. Okay, so my first criteria is packaging and no issues with the squeeze tube. Very easy to apply. I wish some of this were in English, but none of it is at all. Well, it says main Korean English, so we got that going for us. In terms of denatured during types of alcohol, it contains butyl alcohol. It's the second to last ingredient, so I'm confident saying this won't be an issue for almost every single person that uses this. It's got a very, very small amount. Maybe there might be a few people who are very sensitive to it, but it's so small, it's not really an issue. And then in terms of fragrance, so I'm doing all of this based off of Translator app because none of this is in English and there's no updated ingredient list for the new formula yet. So all this is based off a translator. So I initially translated it and geranium oil came up. However, I've translated three times since then using different translators and that never came up again. And it never came up again using the initial translator that showed it. So I have a feeling it was a error. Um, and then it also lists something called Guju tree oil and I could not find any information on that. I'm wondering if it meant to be like Gojo, like Centella Asiatica oil. So uh, I will say this product has no noticeable scent or smell at all. So I'm pretty confident that there's really no fragrance in here. However, everything's based off that translator. So I can't really definitively say because I can't read Korean. I wish I did, but Based on that, I don't think it has any fragrance ingredients. The original formula didn't, so I don't think this does either. Um, the manufacturing location for this one is Korea, so no issues with that. So SPF is 50. Uh, per test done by the director of the Skin Institute of Korea, they did confirm that this has an SPF 50. Um, previously, the old formula with only two filters had an SPF around 20. Now they've doubled the number of filters and the uh, amount of them. So it does look like this tested and is fine. Um, in terms of the UVA protection, uh, this has a PA with four pluses after it, which indicates great UVA protection. Uh, it's got several uh, filters that filter for UVA rays, so I'm confident this is a decent uh, UVA protection. Probably not crazy high like some other ones like uh, Bioderm, but this has good, great uh, PA protection. Okay, then let's get to the filters that they used in this one, and then we'll get to white cast. Okay, so for a UVA filter, we've got Uvenol A+. It's an amazing filter. It filters out UVA rays, very photostable. Um, can be used everywhere in the world except for the U.S. and Canada, so thank you, FDA, for not um, approving that. And it seems like the FDA might even be going more hard on filters. So, I don't know. Whatever. Um, okay, then we've got a UVB filter, which is Uvenol T150, which gives very high photostable absorption of all UVB filters. So a nice filter. Then we've got um, UVA and UVB uh, ray Tinsorb M, which uh, reflects and absorbs UVB and UVA rays. Tinsorb M typically gives products a bit of a white cast, um, but it also helps stabilize other filters. 
And then we've got uh, UVB and UVA2 filter, which is called Uvasorb HEB. Uh, it's a UVA2 and UVB ray absorber. Nice chemical sunscreen uh, uh, filter. Uh, and it's pretty photostable. It loses only 10% of its SPF functions in 25 hours, which is amazing. So within a full day, it only loses 10%, which is amazing. So very nice collection of filters. Let's get to the white cast because this does contain Tinsorb M, which tends to give things a bit of a white cast. And we'll smooth it onto my hand here. And this initially has a bit of white cast, but when you smooth it in and when it absorbs, I find it's pretty uh, darn clear almost. So despite the amount of Tinsorb M in here, there must not be a whole ton of it. Uh, once it absorbs, it really, compared to a lot of other sunscreens, it might have a very, very, very light white cast, but it's not really that noticeable. And perhaps on deeper skin tones, they might have more of an issue, but I find this to apply pretty invisibly, especially compared to a lot of other ones, especially um, other like mineral sunscreens. So this one, in my opinion, really doesn't have a white cast. Uh, then in terms of the texture, I really like this. It's got a really nice, light, moisturizer, lotion-y texture. Uh, it smooths over skin very easily. It sets to a natural finish. It's not super radiant, not super matte. Um, and then once it absorbs, it is non-sticky. So very nice, elegant texture to it. I really like the texture. Um, when it comes to ease of use, it applies very easily. No pilling issues despite the inclusion of hyaluronic acid. A lot of times when you include hyaluronic acid in the sunscreen, it can pill up. I didn't have that issue at all with this one. It works really nicely under makeup. Uh, works really nicely over moisturizers and other serums. So ease of use, very easy to use. No issues at all with that. I love using it. It actually is a sunscreen. It, I don't mind. It's not difficult to use like some other ones where you really have to focus on not rubbing it in and things like that. This one's very easy to use. Okay, antioxidants and beneficial ingredients in this one. So we've got a decent list. We've got, okay, birch water, birch sap. So this is interesting. Uh, it's said to be hydrating and also is said to have antioxidant benefits and also have some oil absorbing abilities. Some people out there have questioned if this birch sap can cause allergies, especially when people are allergic to tree pollen. And to be honest, I could not find a definitive answer. There are some cases on PubMed reading about it where people have applied products with birch sap in there and have had uh, allergies to it, allergic reaction. Not a lot, there's a couple. Um, I'm pretty allergic to a lot of things and I haven't had any issues with this one, especially tree pollen. So in my opinion, the jury's kind of out on having a definitive yes or no, is this allergy causing or not? I, I have a feeling it might just be up to the individual and how sensitive you are. So I can't really say definitively, that's the information. Um, okay, then we've also got niacinamide, very good for skin brightening, barrier repair, anti-acne. We've got sodium hyaluronic, which is a humectant. We've got hyaluronic acid, another humectant, which has to be in every single product I review. Um, licorice root extract, skin brightening ingredient, antioxidant. We've got elantlin, skin soothing ingredient. Purslane, antioxidant, skin soothing, also helps healing irritated skin. We've got sunflower seed oil, which is hydrating and emollient. Ascorbic acid, uh, vitamin C, good antioxidant, skin protecting, skin brightening ingredient. Adenosine, a good cell communicating ingredient. And then vitamin E, which is an antioxidant hydrating ingredient. So a nice list of beneficial ingredients kind of all over the board of anti-acne, skin brightening, skin soothing. Very nice list. In terms of acneogenic ingredients, we've only got two, and they're the last two ingredients, and that's vitamin E and carbomer. So probably not going to be a huge issue for most people, but they're in there, the last two ingredients. So, In terms of animal testing, it appears as though Round Lab is cruelty-free as well as a vegan, and that's according to Round Lab's website as well as a couple of other sites that sell them. But I, they're not listed on any other. There's a lot of sites that just list their entire site is just listing cruelty-free and not cruelty-free brands, and I couldn't find them on any of those, like Ethical Elephant or Leaping Bunny. I couldn't find them on any of that listed either way. So if you have a link, let me know. Okay, in terms of performance, so the last few weeks here, it's been moderate UV rays and actually warm. 
which is awesome because I actually got a chance to really test it. And uh, I never got red, freckled, or tan at all using this. I was very happy with it. It doesn't feel greasy, even at the end of the day. Um, I would say it just tends to be on the slightly drying side, just slightly, even though you think it'd be more hydrating, slightly, slightly drying, but not nearly as much as other sunscreens, especially sunscreens that have a lot of amount of denatured alcohol. Very happy with this one. Lasts all day, washes up easily at the end of the day. Reapplication with this one, very easy, layers well. Love it, worked very nicely. Uh, then finally, in terms of price, so it's the full size, which is 50 milliliters, 1.7 ounces, and retails for around $26. I do wanna say, if you're gonna purchase it, be sure to check out who you're purchasing it from. I purchased it from St Style Vana. And you can see the manufacturing date printed on the back of it. I just have a feeling that there are some sites out there that might still be selling the old version. And you don't want the old version because it will not protect you properly. So FYI, just check it out as much as you can. And then finally, when you get it sent to you, check the manufacturing date. Um, mine says manufactured uh, 2021. So you want to make sure it has 2021 on it. Because if it's pub, uh, made before that, it's probably the old version, which you don't want. So um, in terms of a score, with a 15 being a perfect score, this one got a 13. I'm very happy with it. I really like it. Uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah. So those are my thoughts on the Round Lab sunscreen. I'm interested in hearing from you guys if you've had a chance to try the new version or if you tried the old version, what your thoughts are. So it's amazing that they were able to uh, already make a new version in the period we're still waiting for tests from some other sunscreens. Isn't that crazy? So, I know they're on top of their game. So, there we go. Uh, anyway, so leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. And stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much.